especially for most commonly the bradyarrhythmias arrhythmias or otherwise even for sometimes for the heart failure otherwise even for the some of the tachyarrhythmias as well like ICDs we might have to insert so let's try to understand first of all what what does it mean you know what what is the significance what are the basic concepts for that so as we all know so there is first of all is a pacing system pacing system consists of various components like the canister which you can see for example this one is made from a special company so this is how it looks like for the pacemaker generator so in the front and the back so this is really like a kind of really smart computer having a lot of functions so the pacemaker generator consists of water components it contains of various components as the battery and also the circuit as I said it that's what it makes it like a computer so the battery as we all know it consists of one of the best technology which is called as the lithium iodine technology and there are uh, one of the most common questions any patient or anyone asks is about its battery so what are the factors that affect the battery longevity is of course how much was the capacity the efficiency of the circuit how much uh, was the pacing energy which was being used for example for the output or you know the draining as well and then for example when you were doing the pacing at what rate was it being paced at what output was it being paced so for example how do you distinguish about the replacement indicator so when do you think that it can be replaced so for that you will have to you can know by the pacing rate by seeing for the mode the magnetic rate as well you can also see for the pulse width or the using some of the data which you get it through the telemetry actually same way for example what are the various parameters which you measure so as you can see in this screenshot so what happens is pulse amplitude is there pulse current is there pulse energy is there pulse charge lead impedance same so this applies not only for the atrial but also for the ventricular leads as well and yes on the basis of that you will be able to see the vent battery data so in terms of voltage current and impedance so there are various types of leads uh, which is available so for example either endocardial or epicardial and so for example the epicardial leads mostly are used by the surgeons so most of them are unipolar and use higher thresholds although the cardiologist tend to use is what is called as the endocardial leads so endocardial leads on the basis of their morphology especially on the tip it may need passive fixation for example for the tined tip which you see in the first one although if it has a finned tip so it may uh, you can fix it passively however if it is having an active fixation so you can use a screw in lead actually similarly a lot of times what happens as you all know what so whenever you have done the lead fixation what is going to happen is the tissue may be excitable but with time what is going to happen is there may be fibrosis as well which may be happening over there so this is why initially the amplitude may be really less but after implantation the uh, the amplitude can go really high levels but after that later on with time you know the chronic threshold tends to start decreasing a little bit and stabilize and it tends to stabilize around five to six weeks so this is the reason why it is nice idea to always immediately after the implantation as well you should do some follow-ups as well in between and later on maybe once a year is pretty fine or once in six months as well and the reasons for this is 
various reasons are there as you may see in the slide as well so it can happen is due to trauma inflammatory response of the cardiac tissue or even due to the fibrous tissue so uh, this is one of the reasons the tip of these leads are mostly steroid eluting okay to help overcome all these kind of problems to understand as i had said it i think everyone is really aware of the various physics concept about the pulse width voltage the current so what is volt what is volt so volt is actually the electrical force which tends to drive the current so this is literally you can think of it like a electrical pressure which is driving the current in the direction okay and then comes the current so what is current actually so current is actually flow of electrons and then comes the resistance or impedance so this is actually the opposition to the flow of the current okay so which is measured in ohms and then comes the pulse width so pulse width exactly is length of the time in milliseconds that the output pulse is delivered okay so then comes is the pulse width so in this figure you can see clearly how is the amplitude okay and similarly the duration as well so this is what tends to define the pulse width and ohm's law i think everyone does remember i'm sure all our people are smart enough they can recall it so what was ohm's law so the ohm's law was v is equal to ir so v is the voltage i is the current in milliamps and r is the resistance okay so of course so there's an analogy for that if the resistance is more then the current flows is less isn't it so it's a inversely inversely relationship so as i had already said it the leads the leads can be unipolar or even they can be bipolar as well if it is a bipolar so what will happen is the lead ring is anode anode means it is positive however the lead tip is going to be negative so the tip is negative but the ring is positive so that makes it polar bipolar okay so on a normal basis you can always remember it like this the tip is always negative even in unipolar or bipolar configuration as well okay so unipolar what happens is as you may see this is how it is so for example this is the can and this is the lead so in the unipolar the direct flow is going to be unidirectional between the lead tip and the can however bipolar what is going to happen is it is going to make a circuit so as i had said it already negative to positive and this is how is the deflection so unipolar so what happens is as i had said it it needs only one pole for operation so it operates always the flow is always is like negative to positive of course but what happens is as i said it it needs only one pole one electrode to work in fact and for the bipolar as i had said it what happens is uh, where is it where is it let me see so so this is the unipolar the above one and the figure you can see it clearly and the below one is the one which is bipolar okay so now you have a good understanding for the unipolar and the bipolar so as i had said bipolar is like two poles okay so there is uh, the current will of course be flowing from negative to the positive to complete the circuit which you can again see it over here so but can you see the leads so the lead design as well is slightly different from the unipolar so each and everything has its own advantages and disadvantages as well for example unipolar there will be large pacing spikes and you can see it very easily but the problem is sometimes it can even stimulate the pocket as well and then electromagnetic interference it's very sensitive to that and yes if you are trying to use it with the icd you will not be able to however 
for the bipolar it's really sensitive it is uh, it is it is sensitive but in the sense like you will be able to see only very small pacemaker spikes but it may not be disturbed by the electromagnetic interference or the far field sensing as well or even uh, the other in external interference so for example for the heart rate you all are very smart already so like the typical ECG you try to calculate it as well so you can call it as PPM so how do you say it as pacing per minute so you all already are aware of the how to convert so for example in the ECG you see the smallest boxes of 0 0.04 seconds 0 0.04 seconds so which is equivalent to 40 milliseconds don't forget that so the basics of the ECG apply to the same so the one a, a bigger box comprises of almost five isn't it so that's why the large box will be around 0 0.20 seconds actually and the pacing technology what happens is as we all know the pacemakers do two what are the two things main things actually is pace and sense so, so there are some technical terms as well which we need to understand especially for these cardiac devices so what are this is one is the capture capture is important so what happens is the cardiac depolarization and resultant contraction let it be for the atrium or the ventricle which is caused by the pacemaker stimulus so this is what is the capture one is to one capture occurs when each pacemaker stimulus causes a corresponding depolarization and resulting contraction so did you understand so one is to one capture when you will say there's a stimulus there's a depolarization and resulting in cardiac contraction so this is what you see so for example there's a pacing spike and there's a of course depolarization would have happened following which there's atrial contraction and there's a inborn or what is called as inherent ventricular depolarization happening over here right so this is the normal atrial pacing or atrial capture what do you see so what is called as the pacing interval and the pacing intervals are all regular right so it captures what what are you trying to capture over here ventricle so this is most likely a ventricular or not single chamber pacemaker only in the ventricle you try to see for the pacing intervals pacing intervals are regular so then what is called as capture threshold so what is capture threshold so this is the lowest amount of energy which which is delivered to trying to capture the myocardium 100% of the time and how do you do that so what happens is a lot of times so this is a typical thing so what happens is a lot of times and you will be seeing on the ECG there is no pacing what is the reason for that either there is loss of capture otherwise there is loss of output so but how does it happen so what is happening is yes you may be able to pace the stimulus may be there but it is not able to depolarize and of course there is no resultant cardiac contraction and so what is happening is it may also even happen so for example when the pacemaker program energy is less than the stimulation threshold so for example in the sense the amount of energy which is needed for depolarization of the atrium or the ventricle to happen but you are trying to you are giving lesser energy for example what is happening over here so you are able to see some spikes right so this is a of course a unipolar pacemaker but what is the problem what you notice it's not coinciding with the atrium or ventricular depolarization so that is why so this is what is called as the program rate which you can see for example from the qrs till the pacing spike but is it causing capture no not at all so what are the reasons for the loss of capture so loss of capture can be due to exit block insulation break dislodged leads perforation twiddler syndrome so what is twiddler syndrome so Twiddler syndrome is one of the most common complications is after especially after pacemaker implantation is the person may be always touching the device and playing around fiddling around so that's what is the twi Twiddler syndrome and the what happens is those leads they will 
get enrolled upon one after the other. So what are the possible solutions? So possible solutions are you have to try to program the voltage slightly higher. Otherwise, the program pulse width, you have to increase it. Otherwise, similarly, you have to change the, reprogram the polarity or the pacing leads as well. Sometimes you may also see phenomenon what is called as loss of output. Loss of output, what happens is the pacemaker does not emit any output at all. So for example, what do you see? So in the other beats, you can see there is a clear unipolar pacing spike is there and it causes good ventricular capture as well. But over here in between what is happening in the second space, there is a red circle, right? So what is happening over here is there, there should have paced. The ventricle should have, uh, the pacemaker should have paced. You don't see any pacing spike. So what is happening? So this is loss of output. So what are the causes is either there is a, the screw has become loose, there is a lead fracture, otherwise pacemaker inhibition is there. Similarly, there is possible concealed stimulus on the ECG or maybe the battery is also over. I hope from my VT uh, ventricular tachycardia ECG session, wide QRS tachycardia, you all are aware of the fusion beat. So the fusion beat, what happens is there is a combination of intrinsic beat and also a pace beat. So the morphology tends to change. So it's completely different from the pace beat or even an intrinsic beat as well. So the fusion beat tends to contribute to the contraction of the chamber which is being paced. So for example, what is happening over here? So if we can see it well, this is the sinus atrial beat over here, right? In the first complex. But when you see there's a pacing, pacing complex is there, right? So you see the stimulus, but it is causing the pacing morphology to change. It's indifferent. It, the second and the third complex is almost similar, but the fourth one is entirely different, isn't it? So this is what is called as the atrial fusion. Similarly, it can happen also for the ventricle as well. So ventricle, what is happening over here? So what is happening is, so this was a normal ventricular paced complex. Isn't it? Then, this is a different, entirely different morphology. So this is what is a mix of the inherent ventricular beat and the paced ventricular beat. So this is what is called as a fusion beat. And sometimes, what do you see it as a pseudo fusion? Pseudo fusion, why? Pseudo fusion, as you can see it like this, it tends to fall in an intrinsic beat. And this is the reason the intrinsic beat is not at all altered. So the pacing impulse is ineffective. So I hope in this strip you can recognize the fusion beats and the pseudo fusion beat. So this is, see for example, the narrow QRS is of course the inherent QRS morphology. But what is happening over here, so the pacing uh, the pacing spike tends to fall during the QRS and that is why but it doesn't change so that is why it is called a pseudo fusion and the fusion beat what happens is so one is the paste beat so the wide QRS and all what it looks like so this is the paste beat so there are different morphologies which are a mix of the inherent and the paste beat so which is causing fusion so do you all are aware of the fusion beat pseudo fusion beat and of course the inherent intrinsic rhythm as well so what are the possible solutions is you have to drive up the pacing rate so that trying to assess the ability to capture similarly program the pacing rate slower than the intrinsic rate or add a possible hysteresis so in the sensing what do you do have to do in the sensing the ability of the pacemaker to sense an intrinsic electrical signal which tends to depend upon amplitude slew rate and frequency of the signal so in the sensing as i had already said it so it is the ability of a pacemaker to sense an intrinsic electrical signal and it tends to depend upon the amplitude and slew rate then programmed pacemaker sensitivity 
So what happens is you have to, it tends to indicate the minimum intracardiac signal that will be sensed by the pacemaker to initiate the pacemaker response. So there are something called as intrinsic events. So these are the events which is coming out from the patients. And the pulses, so these are really the secret tips. So what happens is whenever you're trying to evaluate a pacemaker function, they are very important. So what do you see in this ECG over here? Anyone would like to comment? What do you see over here? So you notice this is the sinus rhythm. So this is intrinsic P wave QRS complex as well. So one thing we need to know is there's a difference between the surface ECG and the intracardiac electrograms. So how do you adjust the pacemaker sensitivity? 1 millivolt, 2 millivolts or 5 millivolt? So for example, if you adjust the sensitivity to the maximum, so it sees more. Lower, you decrease the sensitivity. So for example, if you make it to up to like 2 millivolts, so it starts seeing even more. So for example, how much sensitive you want to and of course if you will give it the lowest value then it is going to be the sen most sensitive in fact lower the value more is the sensitivity so it is its ability to see the other things as well then inhibition so inhibited means for example the pacemaker stimulus is suppressed due to a spontaneous intrinsic event sensed before the end of the sensing period. So what is happening over here in this time? So they are pacing in the atria, right? You see the pacing interval. So these are the sensed P wave, which restart the pacing interval. So you start seeing it over here. So this is what is called as the escape interval. Escape interval, why? because it was able to sense an intrinsic P wave. That's why it didn't pace over here in the uh, first and second complex. But after this, it might not have sensed a inherent P wave. So that's why it was able to give a stimulus, cause depolarization and P wave while is seen over here. It went on good, but later on what is happening over here? So what is called as inappropriate atrial sensing. So for example, it saw a VPB, intrinsic ventricular premature beat, and it's, it thought at its, you know, uh, the pacing interval that, okay, I should do a atrial pacing, and it did it, but it was wrong, right? I mean, <laughs> I hope you understood key that <coughs> it was able to inappropriately detect that it had to pace and it did it, which was not right. So, after this, what what is called as the ventricular sensing or inhibition. So what is happening is over here is same thing is happening but for the ventricle. So in the sense, in the first complex you are able to see it depolarizes, the pacing spike is there, it depolarizes the ventricle, okay, goes on good, PQRS T, same thing happens. So there was no need over here for the ventricular, ventricular sensing or inhibition is pretty good over here. Same way, so this is more of a, so, so what are the various comments would you like to give it for the pacemaker over here? Okay, let's ask the questions. The questions will be is whether the pacemaker is a, is implanted in the atrium or the ventricle? Ventricle. Why, why not in the atrium? Use the chat box, I would suggest. I would suggest use the chat box and mute your microphone because it is causing extra noise. Good. Please use your chat box. Okay, so I'll give you a clue as well. So what is happening is over here. Hello, yeah. Yeah, yeah, please tell.
Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there was a. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's where the problem happens. That's why this they forget to mute their microphone and it becomes so noisy. Okay, 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 okay. No problem, no problem. I can understand that. Okay, no problem. So, uh, yes, so as I was telling you, the problem is over here in, in the ECG, if you'll notice, there's no P wave in the next QRS. So that is why what is it's good or the bad part is and there was no pacing as well. So this is indeed a unipolar. The spikes are pacing spikes are pretty big and huge, right? And a single chamber pacemaker, but localized to the ventricle only. Okay. So what is happening in this ECG now? So if we will see it carefully, so what we are noticing is all the spikes are is close to the ventricle. So this is again a ventricular ECG only, a ventricular single chamber pacemaker. And then what is happening is we can see its intrinsic beat as well over here. And then what is the other thing? What do we notice over here? So the other thing what we notice is there's a, there's a normal ventricle paced beat as well. And then so this is what is called as, as we all know, so this is the third beat is a fusion beat. The fourth one is a pseudo fusion. So okay, once we know about all these things, so what about the over sensing? What is over sensing actually? So over sensing is if so for example as the technical term itself says you so rather than the normal sensing so it is able to sense the other noise as well so it is able to sense a lot of other things so what is what is going to happen what are the problems so what is going to happen is you'll be seeing a lot of pacing spikes so for example as you can see it over here so what is happening in the ventricular over sensing so what is happening is over here so for example these are the circles where it should have sensed that there is no ventricular beat so it should have paced over there isn't it so that's why so i hope the definition of over sensing is clear so it is able to sense of the events which is other than the p or the r complex p y because that tends to define for the atrial complex and r wave is for the qrs complex so what are the other causes for this Various causes can be insulation break, intermittent lead fracture, the myopotentials, or even the concealed extracystles as well. So what you can do for these kind of patients? So you, either you can try to reprogram it, otherwise if there is a defect, you can try to correct that. Similarly, unknown sensing will be is when it is not able to sense the intrinsic P or the R wave complex. And due to which you will see a lot of times either it is inappropriately timed or asynchronous or even competitive output pulses. So what do you see in this one? So what is happening is the patient is having the R wave complex, right? So for example, same way, this one is more of a only single chamber ventricle. You, you should try to refresh it in your page. So what is happening in? Uh, uh, yeah, in this ventricle, as we can see it over here, is it is able to pace ventricles later on, right? But what is happening in the first three complexes, it is not able to sense the R wave. So there was no need for actual pacing because the patient is already having the inherent R waves over here. Then, what is happening in the... so? What is happening in the circuit? So what is the problem actually due to which is causing the ardner sensing? So there can be inadequate cardiac signal. Otherwise, dislodged leads can be there. If there is also insulation break, 
as well such kind of problems can be there so you may try to reprogram the settings otherwise of course if there is a defect in the hardware you will have to think for changing the pacemaker actually so there is a north american society for pacing and electrophysiology guidelines are there so there is five letter you know pacing code so what it is actually for the you know a generic code it is called as for the pacemakers so the code stands like chamber paste pace sense response rate modulation and finally the multi site pacing right did you get it so yeah Is it stuck? Just a second. Ah. Okay. Just a second. Just a second. Let me try again. Good. Hello? Hello? Yeah, uh, let me see. Are you able to see the new slide now? Okay, let me try to. Oh, ah. Okay. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, now it is. Uh -huh -huh. Okay. Okay, so now are you able to see this slide called as NAPSE generic code? Yeah. NAPSE, oh, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so we are, no problem. So we are on the current slide. So as I was telling you, so it has a five letter code so first is for the chamber paste sense response rate modulation and the multi-site pacing so the, the codes are very simple like if it is zero or o means none a responds to atrium v for ventricle d for dual of course r for rate modulation so so what are the categories you will have to for example if you come across a pacemaker which is written as d d d d d r so what does it mean so it means is it it is able to pace in the dual chamber means atrium and the ventricle same way able to sense also dual chamber dual chamber means a and v d d d d again means response to the tachycardia response to the sensing so for example triggered it trigger is it a going to trigger trigger means if it is going to need pacing it will go to pace otherwise i means inhibition inhibition means for example it is able to sense sense the internal chamber activity so is it going to inhibit so if there is already a inherent rhythm why to pace them you have to do inhibition right so that's the reason and the fourth as i had said it d triple d r right so r is for rate modulation and zero means always is none so same way for example for the multi side pacing as well so a lot of times we try to do is these are some of the other parameters as well which you can see it over here which is written so there are various pacing modes so what are those various pacing modes so one of the common ones is like voo so what is happening is it is going to keep on pacing without sensing or without taking care of anything at all so this is one of the oldest mode of pacing in fact so what was happening is as i said it, it uh, the emergency pacemaker temporary pacemaker which you try to put it up so most of the times the oldest one especially they are the ones which is like this but yes if you need uh, there is also in these old pacemakers what is called as the magnet mode so in the magnet mode what happens is it tends to turn off the sensing so it tends to start pacing only so you know about the use of magnet is for the troubleshooting otherwise when you are trying to do some pacing maneuvers as well you are trying to see so that is one of the times when you can use the magnet actually so what are you able to see in this ecg so this ecg same way as 
if you can see well, it is pacing only the ventricle, but it is not sensing anything. And the response as well, there's no trigger response, there's no inhibitory response as well. So that is why VOO. So what is AOO? So AAO is AOO is opposite of VOO. So what is happening is it is going to be taking care only of the atrium now. So, but in this, for example, in the third P wave, what do we see? So it is a non-sensed P wave. So now, when you try to make it for the atrium and the ventricle, both, at least the pacing. So, what is called is the DOO. So, in the DOO, what do you notice over here? So, in the, you can, of course, only do the pacing for the atrium and the ventricle both over here. But, when it comes to trying to check for the other parameters, you will not be able to do anything at all over here. As you may see, there is no sensing, there is no response as well. So the response, the inhibitory response or the trigger response, you don't see it at all over here. So for the demand pacing, so for the demand pacing, what you do is, when you're trying to do pacing with sensing, so then comes is the VVI. So what is VVI actually? VVI means there's ventricular pacing, then there's ventricular sensing. And if a ventricular senses, it inhibits the pacing stimulus. So for example, it is able to sense the inherent rhythm of the patient. It inhibits the pacing stimulus, of course, or resets, or aka, or, or I'm, in other words, what you can call it as demand pacing. So for example, in this ECG rhythm, what do you notice over here? So you notice is, there is an inherent PQRS rhythm, sinus rhythm. But in the second one, what is happening is, there is no P wave, only QRS. And that too, what happens is, due to the pacing of the ventricle. So it is sensing only the ventricle. It is not sensing the atrium at all. So this is what is classical of VVI. Not in the, So there is no lead at all in the atrium. So there is, it is only present in the ventricle. It is able to pace the ventricle, it is able to sense the ventricle. The response is also inhibitory in, in the sense when it senses there is a inherent intrinsic ventricular rhythm, it is not going to pace. So what is the AAI? So what is the AAI rhythm? So it is the opposite. Opposite in the sense it is pacing in the atrium, it is sensing in the atrium and the response is also inhibitory. In the sense, if it is able to sense an intrinsic atrial rhythm, it is not going to pace further. So what is one of this master of all? Master of all is like the DDD. So it is able to pace in both the chambers, D, dual. Pace in both, sense in both, inhibitory or triggered as well as both. And it is able to, of course, ability to track as well. So this is what you classically see. So in the first two beats, it sensed the atrial beat and gave a triggered response as well for the ventricle. But in the third beat, when it didn't sense any atrium, it not only paced the atrium, but also for the ventricle as well. And in the last beat, as you can see, intrinsic P wave was present, so it paced only for the ventricle. So this is another classical example of this ECG. For example, the first one, what it is? First one is normal sinus beat. The second complex is only the atrium is paced. In the third complex, atrium and ventricle both are paced. But in the last bit only, the ventricle has been paced. So what is happening in this DDD chamber uh, pacemaker? So AV synchrony is achieved even if the sinus activity tends to stop. For the mode selection, we all need to know what kind of mode is being selection, selected. So it will always depend upon the condition of the patient as well. So the status of the atrial rhythm, for example, it is intrinsic or paced. 
or for example for the presence of the atrial tachycardias as well so that is why you should know you must know the this thing acute so for example if the patient has atrial tachycardia arrhythmias it should be able to pace or trigger as well for the atrium similarly for the status of the av conduction in the normal slowed blocked as well so for example if there is presence of chronotropic incompetence you have to see for that then comes the pacing rate or the interval at what interval or a rate you should pace so this is the rate at which the pacemaker will pace if the patient does not have their own rhythm and it is as i had already said it in terms of it is expressed in terms of ppm pacing per minute or in terms of milliseconds so in terms of single chamber pacing as you have you already said it there are two types of interval pacing interval which is automatic and the escape interval so these intervals you can break it in terms of again further in refractory period like the absolute and relative and similarly so for example what do you notice in this ecg if you will try to look carefully what is the, this is the pacing interval pacing interval means between the two pacing spikes this is what is called as the pacing interval but what is the escape interval escape interval is the duration of the intrinsic beat and the next pace beat so for example this is the time after there is a inherent beat it will give some time which will be used up for sensing that is there any inherent beat which is coming or not if it is not coming then it is going to stop over there right so these two this is how these two concepts work pacing interval and the escape interval now coming to the refractory period so what is refractory period so this is the time within the pacing cycle when an intrinsic beat is not going to be sensed again it can be further off one is the absolute one so absolute refractory period means the time frame following either paced or sensed event during which the sense amplifier are completely turned off and relative refractory period what is going to happen is during this amplifiers are on but everything sensed is going to be considered as a noise and there will be an alert period alert period what happens is the portion of the time cycle when the device senses the electrical activity and responds in a preset or programming manner so for example when you try to see this rhythm strip so what do you notice over here you see that it is not only able to pace the it is able to see the pace the or sense also the ventricle right so but there is a refractory period refractory period means as i had already said it does not going to do anything at all but there is a alert period as well after that and then it is in during that alert period it will be seeing for the other activities which i already said it okay so what do you see in this ecg now same thing so this is about the atrial refractory plus alert plus the pacing interval so pacing interval as you know you can try to see between the two pacing regular pace intervals okay so but the pacing interval is consisting of two things what is that is refractory period during which nothing will be done at all and there will be an alert period as well right so trying to give it in the color signals a refractory period and the alert period so one of the other other important things what is called as the hysteresis so what is hysteresis it tends to increase the escape interval after a sensed intrinsic event and this extension allows more time for additional intrinsic activity to occur so escape interval as you may notice it over here in the first one 
and then the pace like the pacing interval you know it very well and then finally over here is again the escape interval so don't forget the concept of hysteresis so what happens is the hysteresis what will be what you're going to do in the hysteresis will be it will increase the escape interval when it has sensed the intrinsic beat so over here what do you notice so it sensed in the last beat or second last beat i would say or even in the first beat it was able to sense an intrinsic beat and that's why it allowed some extra escape interval so what are the indications of hysteresis so you are trying to so for for example there is a patient which is needing only intermittent or standby pacing so those are the indications for hysteresis similarly if you want to try to promote intrinsic conduction otherwise if you are trying to prevent fusion or pseudo fusion but it can has its disadvantages as well it has to be a rate that the patient can control similarly if the hysteresis rate is too low it may cause the patient to become symptomatic for example the patient can have angina or even fatigue as well and it should not be used in patients with atrial fibrillation or even atrial flutter as well similarly if um, if the patient is getting uh, frequent pvcs that can cause problem so which can lead to frequent initiation of hysteresis so you have to be careful for these kind of things and a lot of times it is misunderstood well so what do you do in the dual chamber pacemaker you know it very well so it is pacing and sensing which is happening in the two chambers so two chambers will be of course in the atrium and the ventricle so there is something called as pacemaker syndrome so what happens is you know what is called as the av synchrony so there is atrial contraction followed by ventricular contraction but sometimes whenever there is loss of av synchrony it is going to cause the patient to feel bad therefore the av synchrony can be restored it should be restored of course it makes the patient feel better and that is what is called as the pacemaker syndrome did you understand so for example when there is no synchrony between the atrium and the ventricle pacing so it is going to cause the av dyssynchrony and that is what is going to lead to those kind of problems and the dual chamber pacing system are composed of two leads atrium and ventricle similarly one pulse generator having two pacing circuits circuit 1 is for the atrial pacing and sensing similarly circuit 2 for the ventricular pacing and sensing so what is happening in the dual chamber pace, pacing the role of the dual chamber pacing is to fill in the blanks for the patient okay and in other words if the patient doesn't have a p wave then the pacemaker will pace in the atrium similarly if the patient doesn't have a r wave the pacemaker will pace in the ventricle so this is how you see it as i had already shown you several of the examples as well in some of the previous examples so what about the sensing so this is so for example this is how is the sensing okay so i think today we have covered quite a lot uh, good deal actually Uh, so you can see in this about the pacing sensing pacemaker syndrome twiddler syndrome so what are the other common problems as well uh, so it has already almost uh, we are nearing towards 1 hour so today we will stop at this and the remaining slides we will try to cover it in the next session okay so are there any questions so far Are there any questions?